Australia! Hello everyone, today is, uh, it's the 25th of April, which is... It's the 5th of April. Today is not the 25th of April, but this is going up on the 25th of April, which is known as Anzac Day. What is Anzac Day, you might ask? Anzac Day is a Remembrance Day observed in Australia and New Zealand on April 25th. The term Anzac is an acronym for the Australian New Zealand Army Corps. When World War I began in 1914, Australia and New Zealand, being part of the British Commonwealth, were automatic allies of Great Britain. The two countries were fairly young at the time. Australia was only 12 years old, and New Zealand only 7. Because of this, their armies weren't that big. So the two countries combined, creating ANZAC, aka the ANZAC soldiers, aka the diggers. The Australians landed at Gallipoli on April 25th, 1915. They ended up engaging in an 8-month campaign that ended with the Allied troops evacuating. During this time, the Australians suffered heavy casualties, which greatly affected Australian morale back home. This campaign is in many ways what sparked Anzac Day. Even though the Australians may have had victories in Gaza and Jerusalem, the Australian and New Zealand people would never forget the men and women who sacrificed their lives for their country at Gallipoli. Today, Anzac Day is not only meant for remembering what happened during World War I, but also to recognize and honor those who have or are currently serving in the Australian or New Zealand military. In honor of Anzac Day, despite us not being Australian, we figured we're going to do some Australian food. And one of the things we couldn't do, I'm very sorry, is Vegemite. Vegemite is like a staple of Australia. And I couldn't get a hold of any because, well, the website I was going to order off of was going to take a month to most likely even six weeks to get here. And I was like, Anzac Day will be over by the time it gets here. So I figured, uh, I'll do Vegemite another day. I'm sorry, I'll just another day. Regardless, we have found a small assortment of food from Australia. We have two types of Australian tea. Because Australia, being a British Commonwealth nation, they do have some similarities to British culture. And one of those similarities is drinking tea. They Though, even have their own afternoon tea. Yeah, which was Twining's, which was uh, made by the Twining's company. There's a, thing, a branch of Twining's in Australia, uh, just like how there's a branch of Twining's in America. Um, but they have their own like sort of assortment of tea and they made Australian Afternoon. Aside from that, we also have Bushel's Tea, which is kind of one of the premier teas to come out of Australia. It's the one I hear about besides, I think, Billy Tea. Uh, I wanted to get a hold of Billy Tea. However, the only problem was, you know, they always either, either it was ridiculously expensive to get it or they just sold it in a hundred tea bag boxes and I'm like, I don't want that much tea. Have sure, you seen your tea I, ex that's precisely why. Regardless, we have these two teas and I wanted to say something really quick. These teas, were ridiculously expensive. This alone, for a 10 bag box of tea, cost me $12. Sure, it was with two day shipping, but oh my goodness. For 10, for 10 tea bags, you wanna know what's even more ridiculous? For $2 more, for $14, I could have gotten a hundred of these. Thank you. Cause I didn't want that many. <laughs> As for this, this was still about like $14 for 50, which is still not like preferable. Most places that I buy from online, you know, they can make it for seven to six, uh, some places four. Um, the most I get up to is like $8, and that's the most I'm usually willing to spend. However, I searched the web for different places to buy this from, and they were all expensive. Australia, why do you have to make things so expensive? I was gonna add more to this. I was gonna add wheat fix. I was gonna add Swiss chips. Those alone were like 10 to $15 each. Australia, I love you. I love you, I absolutely love you. It's like you're one of my dream countries to visit. Don't be offended, but my goodness, that is so, that was so expensive to get here in the state. Aside from that, we have Tim Tacks, one of the most popular biscuits to come out of Australia. Next we have fairy bread, which is kind of a staple of any Australian kid's are the birthday party. Are the sprinkles Australian? No, they're not. <laughs> but the whole thing is, in Australia, what you're supposed to do is literally, this is in place of birthday cake. You take the cheapest bread that you can possibly find, you put butter on it, and then you add on what we call mamparelles here in the States. They call hundreds and thousands. Um, you put these on, and it's supposed to taste great. Birthday cake. Yes, because it's super cheap. But it's something that, like, a lot of Australian people have experienced at least once at a birthday party. To the point where it's become less of a sad thing and more of like a, more of a staple of Australian birthday parties, if you know what I mean. Lastly on the list, in honor of Anzac Day, we have Anzac 
biscuits, which are just been, I made these today, so they're fresh. Uh, Anzac biscuits contain oats, coconut, flour, sugar, baking powder, baking soda, and something called golden syrup, which we don't have here in the States. Do we both have the same tea? Or? No, we don't. <laughs> we have completely different teas. This one's the Bushels tea, that one's the Australian tea. Okay. Let's do Australian afternoon first. Angie is going to try it. Okay, so this is Australian afternoon tea, which it says here on the box. Uh, excite your taste buds with our Australian afternoon blend. This brisk, full body. This brisk, full body blend was created with Australians for Australians. It's the perfect pick me up and it's sure to liven up your day. We think you'll agree it's as vibrant and wonderful as this. Oh, it's as vibrant and beautiful as this country, whatever. It, so it's oh, just it's a full blood tea. Yeah, for a tea that they I hope it's good because for the amount of money I paid and for the it's amount good. of taste it. Why right, don't you just see. taste it? I mean it has that similar like uh taste that all um like you know staple breakfast or afternoon teas have, but like something I think it's an Irish breakfast that they that they used for this one. I'm getting the smallest tinge of smoke. I think the reason is because in Australia, tea was sort of a necessity because again, British Commonwealth and they love tea as well. However, back in like the original time, back in the kind of first few years we grew in Australia and they were having to camp in the bush, tea was almost like a necessity and they just kind of didn't have the ability to make it as fancy as the Brits made it. What they would do is they would call, they'd make what's called billy tea. They would take a billy can, which is a really, really cheap looking kind of like bucket looking can. They'd hang it over a fire with a stick or something. They use a stick to stir it with as well. Put uh, water in, it would boil. They put in like a few handfuls of just loose leaf tea, whatever kind of tea they had at hand, put it in there, let it kind of brew, and then they'd serve it just like that. Sometimes they'd even put a uh, gum tree leaf or a eucalyptus leaf as well in there to give it a little added flavor as well. But I think that's why they added that little bit of that smoky taste because it was you know, cooked over a campfire, quote unquote. What's funny about the tea, Billy tea, is that in Australia's favorite, or in Australia's most popular song, Waltzing Matilda, which was a song I think most people heard when they were kids, that actually kind of starts out by talking about the main character in the song, the swag man. Um, yes. Yes, I thought he was called. Uh, sitting by a billabong and waiting for his Billy to boil so he could make Billy tea. The song then continues with him stealing the farmer's sheep and then committing suicide by jumping into a lake. What a wonderful song. <laughs> but it is like a really popular song in Australia. Anyways, we're gonna try the Bushels Blue Label. This is probably the more popular brand to come out of um, Australia. I think this is one that you'll find, I don't know how, uh, how, I don't know if you'll find this in everyone's house. I imagine you'll find it more than this stupid thing because I'm sorry, I don't like to call it stupid because it's really, really good. It's just super expensive. I, Ah, it's just good. Regardless, let's try this. It's not stupid because it's, it's not stupid. You're not stupid because you're expensive. You're adorable because you're a very small box, but you're, you're lovely. You're lovely. Definitely not as malty as the the, the Australian afternoon tea. Oh. Yeah. Its flavor is lighter. Some people like a more malty taste um, with their teas. Yeah, but this is really, really good. Oh my god. I think I'm gonna have to make myself another one of these because this is really that one's almost earthier. Yeah, oh, that's what I was thinking too. Okay. It's a little more earthier flavor. This one has more flavor to it. Yeah, that flavor hits you almost immediately. Yeah, th this is more This is a little more subtle. Yeah. They're both very, very good. And they're, they have enough difference in their taste from typical British, Irish, and even Welsh teas and Scottish teas that I've had before that sets it apart. Australia. Great job on the tea. Like that's th these teas are wonderful. Like I'm gonna start drinking these all the time. I'll stick with this one then. We'll switch the teas that we had at the beginning then. All right, let's move on to the next. What do you want to do next? All right. So next we're gonna do the fairy bread. Uh, fairy bread, like I said, is a very very cheap treat that you'll be able to find in Australia. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's bread and sprinkles. The reason I made that face is because like my mind thought it was a donut for a split second. I usually don't like that crunch, but I'll put it up in the moment. I'll make an exception because this is actually really good. Mm. And they're going everywhere. <laughs> the sprinkles are actually good. Watch. Oh, that is very good. I remember um, when I was in Australia, I had a friend who was like, 
my friend way back in elementary school. And I went to their uh, her house. They had bread that they would butter and then put sugar on it. What kind of sugar? Just regular sugar. Regular white sugar? You know, I was expecting to be like over overly sweet. Um, especially since my teeth are kind of not out of commission, but they don't like a lot of sweet stuff nowadays because... I bet it depends it's also on the type of sprinkles. Uh, yeah. In many ways, this reminds me of what the Dutch do. The Dutch do something called hagelstok, and that's where you take... Uh, those are big sprinkles. Yeah, those are bigger sprinkles. They're chocolate sprinkles, usually, that you put on bread. Um, very, very good. I had a box of, uh, of hagelstok uh, sprinkles um, that I got from an international food store, and I ate it like every morning for like three weeks. It was delicious. All right, let's move on to the Tim Tams. Uh, how does one open this? Ooh, 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 ah, bing, bing. These are small little chocolate wafer goodness. From what I can tell, there's a parrot on the logo. All right, here you go. And here I go. All right, let's try this. Boop. Cheers. No, we say boop. 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 What? It's good. It's just the chocolate flavor is way too much for me. You've just offended thousands of Australians. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> I'm usually not the biggest fan of chocolate, like at all. I really like this. This is really good. You know what reminds me of? if you took um, Thin Mints, Gross Athlete Thin Mints, and you made them into a candy like this. Minus the mint. Minus yeah. the mint. Well, they do show mint flavor, so. So, so yes from Angie, and no, uh, no. A no from me, a yes date, and yes from me, a no from Angie. <laughs> Next is the Anzac Biscuit. Now, the history of the Anzac Biscuit, take whichever one you want. The history of the Anzac Biscuit comes from most women were afraid that their husbands weren't getting uh, proper nutrition or proper sustenance from the rations that they had. And so, I think it was during World War I, the, a lot of wives ended up cooking these types of uh, biscuits, giving them with their husbands so they could last for like a month or so. And these were absolutely delicious and they're simple to make. These don't require any eggs so they don't go bad, which is good. Uh, it doesn't have any straight milk but it does have butter in it. And it's made from simple ingredients and it really, really sustainable ingredients like oats and coconut and what have you. It's so, I hope it's good. And yes, there's supposed to be this crunchy. Though I was reading online that some Australians like them crunchy, others like them soft and chewy. So I guess it really depends on who you are. definitely not a crunchy biscuit. Ooh. What? Oh. I'm sorry. Luckily, I like those things. I'm gonna go to town on this stupid thing. Get that. You made so many. This is really, really good. I do like the crunch. Then again, I'm more of a crunch person myself. I do like a lot more crunch and some of this things. Um, I do like soft ones too, but these are very, very good. Oh my gosh. And she doesn't like them, but it's not because they're not good. It's because she just doesn't like coconut. And she doesn't like oats that much either, so those are the two biggest components here. However, I do see, I think these are actually really good in the morning because the oats would most likely, a couple of these would probably be enough to kind of fill you up because oats are really, really good for you. It's like eating an oatmeal cookie, a little more crunchy than an oatmeal cookie. This probably goes great with the tea. Oh. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my gosh. I want a third opinion. Hey Adam, Adam, you want to try a piece of this? Yeah. They got they got oats and they got coconut and flour and golden syrup. My roommate's trying it. That has like all crunch, but um, yeah. Yeah, I don't normally like like oatmeal cookies or anything like that, but yeah, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, those. That's a good. Thank you. For you know what I think these wow. would be good in? Ah. Um, like if you crumble like them up, ice cream. <laughs> No, I don't have any ice cream with me. I think I'm out. But I, 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 I totally would. Like little tiny ones, you yes. 
Oh my god, put milk over this stuff and then crush it in a bowl? I'm trying that right now. I don't want to offend a ton of Australians who would go, why would you do that? Like, I feel like these could grow on me. Like, if you I like more. the aftertaste. Yeah. It's just like, I don't like the initial crunch. I think it's that golden syrup that gives it a really nice flavor. Yeah. And, and speaking of which, let's do one more thing today. Taste the golden syrup? Let's taste the golden syrup. Oh. That looks like a paint can. <laughs> So we got gold oh, syrup. Look at that color. I know. Look at, oh. look at that. Like it's not gonna focus on it, but like look at. Oh, that. be careful! It's coming out. Ah. It takes them off the top. What kind of Mary Poppins medicine is this? We take them off the top. That's very thick. I could eat that stuff. That stuff's so good. I you could have do, so much left. I could do like a spoonful of that, and it's delicious. My tongue doesn't know what to think. About. <laughs> I don't know what to think about it. Okay, so golden syrup's a little different than what we're used to here in the States. At most, we get like caro corn syrup or we get maple syrup or stuff like that. Golden syrup is usually made from, I think, refined sugar. And its cousin is treacle syrup, which is a very, very dark colored thing. It's a staple of British culture. Dark colored thing. Angie, you know what the word treacle is because of... Harry Potter! Exactly, because they do treacle tarts. This just turned into a very small British taste test, because that's a very British item. And it's so good. It's, it's taste is a little similar to corn syrup. If you've ever tasted in corn syrup, which is just, I don't recommend it. Just without that really gross taste that you get from corn syrup. Same almost consistency, a little thicker. But it's almost got in, it's almost got a caramel taste to it. Almost. I did taste that. But like, not exactly a caramel taste. It's so it's like, yeah, exactly. So people who don't like caramel would like it. So, on a more serious note, before this video ends, we just wanna, I would like to personally give a thank you to anyone who is in the Australian uh, military at the moment. Despite us being Americans, Australia is a very close friend to America, and in turn, I will always say that anyone who defends their country by putting their life on the line deserves the utmost respect. I know Anzac Day is also more for remembering what happened back in World War I and World War II, remembering the soldiers that fell at Gallipoli and the soldiers that fought throughout the rest of the war. I mean, Australia was only 13 years old when the war broke out, but yet, wow, they were a pretty great force during that war. Uh, we also want to give a, with the recent attacks that happened in New Zealand, given that Anzac is not only Australian, it is New Zealand as well. With the recent attacks in Christchurch, uh, I just want to personally um, send my, even though it's happened about a month already, I want to send uh, my well wishes, my thoughts, my prayers to all of those who were affected uh, by that horrible tragedy. People deserve to live in a nice community and deserve to practice what they want to practice. And the fact that someone would take offense to that and try to physically erase them is both cowardly and disgusting. This person who I'm glad I have not seen his name and I'm glad that the, um, the Prime Minister of Australia, uh, excuse me, of New Zealand has said that she will not say his name because that's all he wanted was attention. I also think um, that just in a very general sense, we all have to live in the same world, uh, different uh, strains of people, whether you're like, doesn't matter where you live, how you grew up, your culture, we all have to live in the same world. And uh, we shouldn't, no one should be able to decide who doesn't get to live. Disgusting, it's wrong, it shouldn't be done. And I hope the person who committed that act um, answers for their actions. Um, and with that, New Zealand, you know, we, we, we in America, we stand with you. This was a shock to, I think, not just New Zealand, but it was a shock to the world. And with that, uh, I was going to also, I, in about a month or so, once I'm able to get some more money in my hand and uh, buy some more items, I'm going to do a video on New Zealand as well. I found we just some, have to wait for his drug supply to come in so we can sell So them. I can sell all my drugs. Buy cocaine from from uh, www.iamanawfulperson.com. Back to a serious note, New Zealand, we will be doing a video on you soon. Uh, Australia, we will be doing a video on Vegemite at some point. Uh, lastly, uh, thank you all for watching, but I just want to give a quick uh, thank you to any of the uh, emergency personnel who uh, were at the situation. 
I want to thank all of the bystanders who went out of their way to help those around them. They were stories of people whose lives probably were saved by the generous actions of a bystander. Again, friends at both New Zealand and Australia. Anyone who's currently in the military, anyone who has served in the military before, thank you for your service to your country. I'm sure that, you, that your citizens are incredibly proud and very, very appreciative of what you have done. Lest we forget. Thanks for watching.